sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. No one in Paul's presence could pervert the gospel without his rising up and rebuking it. He said, there is one truth that we cannot give up on. And he said, I stake my life on it. And we dare not give in on this one issue. And that issue is that the gospel is simply this, that the unrighteous are justified before God by faith alone in the victory of the cross of Jesus. They are not justified. They are not accepted by God through any human effort through the works of the flesh of the law. This is the very heart of it. You give up on this point, you have no gospel left. Even if you could conquer every lust of your flesh so that you could stand before a mirror and say, I have no lust, I, I, I have no temptation that I have not been able to conquer. My thoughts are clean. And you could stand honestly and say, I'm clean. God would not accept it. And you would be boasting and you become very proud and judgmental. That's what always happens when man wins it in his own power or thinks he's won it, and sin is still lying at the door, you can be sure you're going to fall again anyhow. Because suddenly being on that merry-go-round, sin confess, sin confess, and that little short victory you got by your own willpower made you feel great and made you judge everybody around you. Why don't you have the power I have? Paul despised the hypocrisy of this perverted gospel. The Jews from Judea, when everywhere teaching, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. Now, they are believers. They believe in Jesus Christ, but they're saying, you have to add the law. You have to add circumcision or you can't be saved. It's Jesus plus circumcision. They were mostly converted Pharisees, the Bible said, which believed. And they taught it was necessary to circumcise and to command them to keep the law. Yes. You're saved by faith, but then after you're saved by faith, you have to work this out. You come back under the law, and all these do's, all these don'ts, that you may please God. And Paul preached that all believers are purified one way only, and that is by faith, that through grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, but not by the works of the flesh. Now, Paul look these Judaizers in the eye he said your legalism has robbed you of all love for hurting people and folks that's the problem with legalism it is so judgmental there's no love to it there's no love whatsoever he said you hear of a new convert and you you take off after him and you hound him beware of anybody comes to you trying to put a burden on you that you have to do something to get saved other than believing on Jesus Christ They'll come to you and say, well, you can't be saved if you are not going to cut your hair a certain way. And if you're going to wear those things under your ears, and if you're going to have some paint on your face, and if you're going to wear, you're a woman and you're wearing trousers, they're going to come in. Now, I don't, I don't like to see women all looking like street people. And I believe that when you have the Holy Ghost and you really trust Jesus, you get into the Word and the Holy Ghost begins to teach you. These things begin to drop off. But you see... That has nothing to do with your salvation. Paul preached, We who worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, we have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. And Paul goes on and says, No man tried in the flesh to please God more than I did. Nobody. This man of God could look in the eye of every circumcised Jew, every converted Hebrew, every believing Pharisee, every Jewish convert who's struggling and striving to please God by the deeds of the law. And he could say, I've been there, I've done that. He could say, go ahead and tell me about your burning desire to please God. Tell me about all the promises you made to God that you wouldn't do that evil thing again and you failed and went back and did it. Tell me about your zeal to please God with your long hours of study, your forced discipline, your repetitious prayers. Tell me about the hypocrisy of looking holy on the outside, but knowing personally inside that there's wickedness. Tell me about all your hopeless efforts, how you sweat, trying to be righteous and good on your own power and strength. 
Tell me about all the fears, the failures, the struggles, the useless efforts. Tell me all about it, Paul says, and I'll tell you that I tried harder than you did. He said, I was totally blameless concerning the law and keeping all the do's and don'ts, but I missed Christ. In spite of my efforts, I missed him. The devil knows that walking in the Spirit is walking in total dependence on the Lord, trusting the Spirit of God to produce the righteousness of Christ in us. So he tries to go about and abort this process. And he's going to try to get you to fight your own temptations and the power of your flesh, independent of the work of the Holy Spirit. And he's going to try to tell you that walking in the Spirit is simply doing your best not to sin. And that's not walking in the Spirit. You have to give up the hope of ever improving your flesh. It has to be crucified with Christ. God and His own Son, Jesus, made an agreement. They made a covenant. The Father presented this to His Son. He said, if you will go and you become a mediator, you come in the flesh and take on human flesh, God says, I make an agreement with you, I covenant with you that I will hold you by the hand and I will carry you through. I'll never allow Satan to touch you. I will deliver you and I will hold you by the hand and I will keep you. Jesus, on the other hand, said, I will go, Father, and this was his side of the agreement or the covenant. I will go, Heavenly Father, and I will not do anything except what I see and hear from you. I will not do anything in my own human flesh. I'll go anywhere, including the cross, if you need me. But Jesus said, as a part of this agreement, I'm going to obey you fully. I'm going to fulfill the law, every command of the law. I'm going to obey you perfectly. And I can only do that if you are holding my hand. He said, the only condition, and this is the condition by which Christ accepted this, that not only do you hold my hand, not only do you carry me through all the powers of hell and darkness, but my seed goes with me. All my children get the same privilege. My obedience is going to be their obedience, not their own. My obedience will be offered to you for my whole seed. Hey, folks, you know what the seed is? The children of faith. You are the seed. I am the seed by faith in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 42, verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. This is speaking of Christ and will hold thine hand and I will keep you. This is the covenant God is making with his own son. He said, if you go in human flesh, you become the mediator for man. He said, I, the Lord, will hold thee in righteousness. I'm going to call you in righteousness. I'll hold your hand. I will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles to open blind eyes, bring out the prisoners from the prison, them that sit in darkness and out of the prison house. Turn to Psalm 89, verse 27, begin to read, Also I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. That's the Father's. I'm going to make you higher than all the kings of the earth when you take on this, this call. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne is the days of heaven if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments i will visit their transgression with the rod their iniquity with stripes nevertheless my loving kindness will i not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fail my covenant i will not break nor alter the thing that's gone out of my lips Jesus said, I sanctify myself that they may be sanctified. Remember what Jesus said to, to you and to me and to all his disciples? You can do nothing on your own. He said, without me, you can't do anything. But with me, you can do all things. Depend wholly on me.
You just trust in me and you trust in my obedience that I've given to the Father was a perfect obedience. You can never present to him a perfect obedience in your own. Come simply by faith now and say, Jesus, you have promised no matter what I'm going through, I'm under covenant. You said you would take me by the hand. Father, I'm in trouble. Father, I've got a lust I can't handle. Father, I've got problems in my home. The Lord said, reach out your hand. Put out your hand. I'll hold your hand. He said, I will put my fear into your hearts that you shall not depart from me because you're under covenant. I'll put my fear in your heart. Don't try to produce it. You just put your hand in mine. You trust my obedience. You trust my righteousness. You just believe, accept my promise. Your very best obedience of the flesh is not acceptable to God. But faith gets you into the covenant. And once you're in covenant, you obey God not to be accepted, but because you're accepted. And then the obedience you offer to Him is a gift of love because you're in covenant. I thank God. He's not going to let you go.